So it's an all new Prince of Persia. It's a new prince. It's a new story. It's a, a new adventure. It doesn't have a chronological connection with the previous Prince of Persia game. And because we're starting fresh, we're starting new, we wanted to do a lot of stuff new. We wanted a new artistic direction. We wanted a new type of open world gameplay. We wanted a new support character in the form of Elika. And we wanted a new combat system. And you're going to see all of that during this presentation. done three Prince of Persians before Sands of Time, Warrior Within, The Two Thrones. Um, they were all very successful, but we were also starting to get into a rhythm of falling back on certain gameplay mechanics like the Sands of Time power. And we had an opportunity here to do something new because there was a three year delay in between The Two Thrones and this one. So new consumers, new people, you know, ready to play Prince of Persia, to experience the Prince of Persia universe. And because we decided, all right, you know what, let's embrace the newness, we said, all right, let's do it all out. Let's not just change one or two things, let's change lots of stuff. Elika is the, the, the female support character. Everywhere you go in the game, she's gonna follow. Everything that you're doing, she's doing with you to collaborate with you and make you that much stronger, that much more powerful an action hero, including combat. And you're going to see a little bit of combat in action right now. I'm fighting one of the guardians, one of the boss creatures in the game. We call him the Hunter. is a human, but she's got these new magical abilities that she's just discovering as you're playing the game. So it's sort of, she doesn't know how she's doing the things she's doing, and she's kind of coming to terms with these new abilities just as you are. Yeah, it's, it's, there are a variety of mini games integrated into combat in a very seamless way, as you can see. We're, they're not like quick time events, we're not putting buttons on the screen. They're all done contextually and they'll, they'll be tutorialized in such a way that once you understand the theory behind them, we won't need to put up buttons on the screen because there's the right button to solve that particular mini game challenge and it keeps the sort of flow of the combat very fast paced, very intense, which obviously we want. So here I've almost hurt the enemy to half of his health with one more hit. I've damaged him so, so much now that he's going to try and escape, he's going to try and run away. But where he runs to happens to be the place that I want to get to, so I've got to go chasing after him. Another one of the things we wanted to do this time around, first of all, take the prints outdoors into organic environments, and second of all, create a true Prince of Persia game that had real sort of acrobatic flow to it. So I run, I jump, I hit the pole, I flip off of the wall, and I always know what my next ingredient is, but in a fashion that was much more open so that the player had a lot more choice in terms of how they played the game. There's choice in terms of the pathways that they follow. There's choice in terms of how they navigate through the world, the order in which they explore the world. And that choice will have a very real impact on how the, the, the gameplay evolves and how the story evolves as well. So it's not just, it's not just choice for the sake of choice. It really is gonna make sure that you and I have two very different gameplay experiences. So you just saw me there mess up. I, I, I accidentally run, ran off of the platform. And before I could fall to my death, Elika reached out with her magical you know, projection of her soul, if you will, 
and grabbed me and pulled me back to the safe platform. It's our sort of dynamic checkpoint system, we call it the Save Me, and it's one of the systems that combine to replace the fact that we no longer have the rewind power from the sands of time. What you see me doing here is the grip fall. This is another move that really helps the player get a lot of second chances in the game. In a lot of situations, if you accidentally miss an ingredient, you can press the grip fall button and you'll slide down any vertical surface in the world, possibly finding another platform or another you know, uh, area where you can uh, eject to or jump to that'll, that'll save you. You won't fall to your death. It's using the Anvil engine, which powered Assassin's Creed, but it's, it's heavily, heavily modified to suit our particular needs. So I've defeated the enemy who was guarding this particular area and with his defeat I now finally have access to this thing here, this artifact here which is the healing ground. And if I bring Elika here, I press the Elika button, she'll use her magical power, the healing power which will, dry, which will blast out this, this, this wave of healing energy which will spread through the area, driving out the corruption, killing any remaining enemies, returning life and light and beauty to the area, and, and just generally restoring the world to the state it was in before the bad guy of the game, the evil god Ahriman, infected everything. It really depends on the type of player you are. If you're the type of player who wants to collect every piece of currency in the game, so this is the currency of the game, we call them light seeds, and once an area is, is healed, you can collect these in order to purchase more of the magical powers like this one that'll allow you to access other parts of the world. So if you're the type of player who wants to collect every single one of these and wants to make sure you get the achievement for you know having collected all thousand light seeds, um, you're going to be looking at a game that easily is going to be upwards in the 15, maybe even 20 hours. And, and otherwise, you know, there will probably be some players who will finish it in 10 to 12, which really we consider to be sort of the sweet spot for the action-adventure uh, genre. Yeah, well, a, a perfect example is, so I have the rebound power, which allows me to use this plate, right? Um, and right now, I'm collecting the light seeds. Oh. So as I collect the light seeds over here, I'll come across another magical plate, this one. And I don't have the magic power right now that will allow me to use that. And if, if I did, it would allow me to access a part of the world up here using a different magical ability that would allow me to collect some other light seeds that are currently inaccessible. That's Prince of Persia.